Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Knitting Type Podcast. My name is Sarah, and I am the host of this podcast. And you can find me on other forms of social media, such as Ravelry, Instagram, Ello, YouTube, Blogger, and Gmail, if you need to get in touch with me for any reason. I'm the knitting type at gmail.com. And uh, today is Saturday, July 2nd, and I believe that this is my eighth episode. It has been quite a little bit, I would say about three or four weeks since my last episode, and that's just summer, just kind of in that summer mode where the weekends are too short and the there's so much to do and to be outside and Um, I think time just kind of gets away from you. So typically I like to record every other week, but I have not recorded for about a month. And so I have quite a few things to show you. So I'll start with some just general housekeeping. And the first announcement that I have is that my YouTube channel has reached over 500 subscribers, which is totally exciting. Um, You know, I was, I was excited when I had one subscriber Uh, which was back in February, I was like, oh my gosh, somebody watched and somebody cares and, you know, I'm here to make friends. And so getting one subscriber was really fun. But now that I have 500 plus, um, that's even just kind of overwhelming. I don't know how YouTube channels have like 4,000 subscribers because I feel responsible for the people that choose to subscribe. Like, I want to be entertaining or I want to provide information because they subscribed for a reason or with some level of expectation. So to have 4,000, I think I would get overwhelmed. But anyway, I'm very grateful for the 500 plus that I have. And to show my gratitude, I wanted to host a giveaway. And so what I'm going to do is give away um, this project bag and Notions pouch set. And um, I will do a drawing on Friday, July 8th. And so this is just to show you, this is just a medium sized project bag in this adorable kind of red rose or it's like coral. Oh, it matches my nail polish Um, with a just cotton uh, white lining and a nice little wrist strap here, and then a matching Notions pouch that matches the bottom fabric. And so if you would like to be entered into this drawing, please just leave a comment um, in the, uh, uh, well, let's see. Yes, leave a comment down below in the uh, YouTube comment area. And um, yeah. So I think I'll just host the giveaway via YouTube. I'm trying to think if I should do it on Ravelry or not. But I guess I can just do it on YouTube because maybe some people are subscribers that they don't have Ravelry accounts. So, um, yeah. So thank you all for watching and for subscribing. And if, if you haven't subscribed and you want to be entered into the drawing, just subscribe and then leave a comment on the YouTube video because I'd really prefer the uh, giveaway gift to go to subscribers and not, uh, just to the viewers. So it's kind of a subscriber, uh, giveaway. Okay. And so, um, that was exciting. And my second, my show notes are over here. My second housekeeping thing item is the project bag swap that I was hosting with Shannon of Soxetra. So that's completely wrapped up now. All uh, project bag swap participants have been assigned. They should have sent their packages by July, no, June 25th. And so at this point, it looks like people are receiving their packages. And I'm uh, seeing people post the packages on Instagram or they're posting it on the project bag swap uh, discussion board under the knitting type. And so If you did participate and you have gotten your SWAT package, please feel free to share a picture of your SWAT package and put it on Instagram or on the discussion board. And if you use Instagram, then hashtag project bag swap 
Um, it's kind of fun to search that and, and just kind of get a collection of what everybody has swapped and received so far. It looks to be uh, like something everyone has really enjoyed, and we've even had a couple people ask if uh, Shannon and I will be hosting it again. And so the answer is yes, sometime in the fall, we are planning to host the Project Bag Swap a second time. So uh, if you're curious about that, just know it is in the works. Okay. And now, FOs. I have FOs. So the last time I recorded, I was talking about going through a bit of tendonitis, which I'm still suffering on and off from, probably because I will not let myself slow down when it comes to uh, making things or, well, really just making things. It's like I can't, I can't sit still. I'm not good at just sitting still and reading. I really wish I was. But if I'm not knitting, then I'm sewing. And if I'm not sewing, then I'm cross-stitching and so on and so forth. Um, I've recently taken on gardening, too. And so the other weekend, my husband and I gardened, and I helped him dump 24-pound, well, 30 24-pound bags of dirt into our garden beds that we had constructed. Well, he built them. I didn't build them. And so... Um, I strained my wrist a little bit doing that and was back in the brace for a little bit. But uh, the pain is only on and off, so I have been able to get some knitting done, and I'm very excited to report that I have three FOs. One is like an FO whip or a FOHO, like a finished object and a hoe all at the same time, which if you don't know what a hoe is, it's a half-finished object. So the first one I have to show you these are my Hermione's everyday socks and I'm super excited um, they are knit out of the um, Lady of the Black Lake by um, Molly Klatt of a homespun house in her Olsen base which I believe is her BFL base and uh, then I did the heel toe cuff in the Loopy Use Solid Series, um, I forget, it's it's a standard white color, so I don't know if it's like marshmallow or vanilla or something like that, but here you go. You can see the Hermione's Everyday Pattern, and if I were a better person, I would have the name, actually, let me see if I have it written down. Hold on. Let me look in my, my notebook where I keep all of my special notes. Um... Nope, I don't have the pattern. I just have the yarn written down. That's such a shame. Um, but anyway, if you go on to Ravelry and you search Hermione's Everyday Socks, you will find this pattern, which is uh, just a lovely and simple uh, alternating pearl knit stitch every couple of rows, and it just creates this really nice um, pattern. I don't know. I like it and I I'm finished and they fit and I couldn't be more happy and so this is one more pair of socks for uh, the box of socks knit along or Cal being hosted by Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast and so I believe that this is pair number four for me in the year so pair number four and then I finished another pair of socks. Whoosh. What? Blueberry waffle socks. Um, so here they are in all their glory. Aren't they beautiful? So these are knit on, um, or the, the yarn that I used was the uh, a homespun house half blood prints on her Dale base, which is 100% merino. I believe it's a certain kind of merino, and I do have those notes in my notebook right here. And so I can tell you that it is, oh, it just says micron merino, 19 micron merino. So um, I think Molly had talked about how. She wasn't sure if she was going to keep the Dale base because the color absorption that happens on this yarn is not as 
deep or intense as it is on her other bases. So this uh, Half-Blood Prince, the blues are kind of a lot more subtle than on some of her other bases. But I really liked it and I think they're beautiful. And I was looking for a blue yarn that had flecks of brown. Uh, so something that actually represented blueberry waffles to make the pattern. And um, I think this yarn fit perfectly. So I knit both of these pairs of socks on um, US 1s or 2.25 millimeter uh, 32 inch Chaogu circular needles. I like to do magic loop. And um, interestingly enough with these, you can kind of see that when I switched to the foot pattern down here, well, let's see, this one's kind of blown out. So you can see here that, I mean, I guess they both kind of look like they end in pearls, but actually this heel or this foot has more uh, knit stitches, meaning there are fewer of the, like if you did a, a knit row and a purl row, and they repeat around the sock here. There are fewer stripes of the uh, knit pearl row on that sock than there are on this, this sock. So this one, I think I had an extra row of the knit and pearl on this sock. It doesn't, you probably couldn't see it if I didn't point it out to you, but um, I noticed when I took it off and I was like, oh, well, I guess I could have, I could have made more of an effort to get it correct, but that didn't work out. I also like to knit a smaller cuff. I think I've talked about this before. So I tend to have a 10 stitch ribbed uh, single, single rib where I also like to knit through the back of the loop. So it's a twisted, it's a twisted rib, uh, 10 stitches tall. And this is a standard heel and then this is a fancy heel. And I don't know uh, what it's called. I know when I look at the pattern, but I don't know off the top of my head right now while I'm recording. So those are two of my FOs. Yay! FOs. And then I have finally started a mini's blanket. So um, back when Shannon of Soxetra was hosting the Blanket Blitz Cow, I participated with a blanket that I'm currently making, which is a um, mitered square blanket. So it has that seam that runs diagonal off the center, but I wasn't making it out of minis. In fact, I think it's made out of DK weight. So I don't even know if, technically if that blanket qualified or not, but um, I checked with Shannon and she said that was fine because it was a blanket that I was kind of working on and, and it needed attention, but I didn't do much work on it because I'd lost that loving feeling. Honey vanilla chamomile tea. I have quick caffeine and so this is my jam and it's in my alpaca llama mug. Not emus. I called them emus once. They're not. Their llamas or alpacas. Um, so anyway, I was collecting all of these minis during that time, though. I was either doing mini swaps or I was getting minis out of the socks that my I was making myself. Or I had joined a couple of mini skein clubs so that I would get uh, many, minis and I would just hold on to them. And I wasn't putting them towards a blanket. And I thought about the Cozy Memories blanket that a lot of knitters are currently working on, but it's basically a mitered square blanket <laughs> knit with minis. And I thought, well, I'm kind of already doing that pattern. Um, and so I wanted to do something different. And then I saw that uh, a knitter whose Instagram name is Freckled Whimsy was crocheting a blanket using her mini skeins. And I thought, that's what I want to do. I can crochet. And it's kind of a nice break from knitting all the time because, you know, I'm, I'm working on this box of socks, Cal, and, and conquering my fear of knitting socks. And 
So I'm knitting a lot for that. And then I've also gotten into knitting shawls this year. And so it would kind of be nice to break it up with some crochet. So I decided to take uh, Freckled Whimsy's idea and do the same exact thing and use my mini skeins for the purpose of making a crocheted blanket. And so the good news was that, well, the, the sad news <laughs> was that I had missed the blanket blitz that Shannon hosted from, I think it was the winter into the spring. And uh, like I said, I was working on my mitered square, but I wasn't really getting uh, any progress made. And I didn't really feel like I was participating in it. I'd posted a picture once and hashtagged once. And so um, what I did was, was I decided to uh, start, what, okay, blah, 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 blah. Shannon is uh, now hosting with Mina Phillips of the Knitting Expat podcast, a summer blanket blitz knit along, cal, or as I will call it a crochet along, C-A-L. Um, and I think it's going to be three months over the summer. And they jointly decided to co-host this summer blanket blitz project together because Mina has a new uh, blanket project out and available and I think it's called her pinwheel blanket and um, it's a really cool pattern but like I said I wanted to crochet with my minis so uh, according to Shannon of Soxetra you can um, you don't have to make the pinwheel blanket and you don't have to make the mitered square blanket but you do have to be working on a blanket uh, with your minis in order to participate in the cal and so I made my very first hexagon um, out of a mini skein that I had. I believe this this mini skein, well, I know that this mini, mini skein is made from yarn from Adelaide's Cottage, uh, Shauna, and her yarn, I'm not sure of the color name, but it might be on her uh, Etsy store if you want to go and check that out. It was really pretty. I just, I love the blues. If I turn it this way, you can kind of, it's not as blown out, I don't think. And so then I just used more of the same white that I used on this uh, sock. So the Loopy U Sing Solid Series in this white color. And um, I used a crochet hook size 4, which I think is an E hook. So, um, and I made, I whipped this up yesterday. Now there is a tutorial that I use that I will reference in the show notes um, on Ravelry. And I'm not sure what, I'm not sure of the uh, blog where the tutorial is listed. I got it from the Freckled Whimsies Instagram when she'd posted a picture of her blanket. So this is about the size of my palm or like, like a coaster, if you will. And I really enjoyed working on it. So this is my F-O ho, my faux ho, because technically it's a finished object, but it also belongs to a family, uh, which will be several other hexagons that I will put together as I work on them. So those are my three uh, F-O's and ho's and whips. Oh no, I didn't bring my monkey socks. I'm going to go get them. pause here. Unpause here. <laughs> so I have another um, hoe or a whip and that is housed in my drawstring project bag that I made myself. I do have one more of these on Etsy if you're interested um, in my the knitting type shop. I'm winded because I just ran up the stairs to go get this project out of my bedroom where I keep it because Sometimes you knit while watching a show before bed. So um, the other podcast the other week, I had talked about how I wanted to make the cookie A pattern um, monkey socks. So the pattern is called monkey socks and it is by cookie A. Is the, She's the designer. And um, I wanted to make them to participate in the cookie jar cal that was being hosted by Lara of 
the Fawn Knits and um, Candace of Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. But unfortunately, because of the on and off again, tendonitis and other things that I had that had to get done, like I wanted to finish my other two pairs of socks, I didn't get started on this until June 30th. So uh, technically, I participated in the cookie jar cal for one day. And I'm just glad that they hosted it because it inspired me to make these socks. And I'm having so much fun doing that. And so here is the whip. Do, do, do. Oh, there you go. And so I'm already on this heel. And I think I might get this wrong, but I feel like this is the eye of partridge heel. But maybe I'm... I'm just remembering that from somebody else's podcast and maybe I'm just making that up. Um, so anyway, I am using a Loopy Use um, Solid Series again and this color is perfect pink for the heel toe cuff. And then this speckled cream yarn here for the body is um, Teacup by Hedgehog in their sock yarn base. This is just, these are the crazy needles I'm using. Needle dancing. Um, and they are the 32 inch size one, 2.25 millimeter uh, chow goo needles. That's what I call them. I'm not sure if chow goo is how you actually pronounce it, but it might be chia goo because it's C-H-I-A-G-O-O. -O, so it could be chia goo, like chia pet. Um, anyway, I am loving this. It took about, I will say, three or four repeats of this lace pattern for me to commit the pattern to memory. And, um, and then after that, I had the chart memorized. I think that, I think the stitch patterns worked over 16 stitches and eight, eight or 10 rows, I think. Um, so I have one sock cuff done and I'm moving on to the heel and it's very, it's very excited. I'm exciting. I'm really kind of enjoying that. So I'm planning on finishing those. Hopefully my goal was to have one sock finished each week in order to have 12 socks done by the end of the year. Uh, now I did that knowing that at that rate, it would only take half of a year to finish the socks. However, I am still a new sock knitter, and so I wanted to give wiggle room for errors or tendonitis or vacations or anything else that might come up or another project that grabs my eye where I'm like, I cannot focus on socks right now. I have got to knit on insert new project here. Um, so, yeah. So I'm hoping to have those done in another week and a half, but because my wrist is kind of, I was feeling so good until I did the crochet the other day. And then something about the way I, I crochet, I guess, like this constantly aggravated the tendonitis and I've been wearing a uh, wrist brace all morning. So maybe I won't hit that goal, but it is my goal to get them both done and if I do, then I believe I can technically participate in the second Socks of Summer knit along by, hosted by uh, the Grocery Girls. And jo that's Jody and Tracy of the Grocery Girls podcast. I think the second Sock of Summer is a knit along there having about completing your second Socks. Moving on. Um... I got some mail in the last month. So this is my section called You've Got Mail. Um, where to start? I guess the first thing I can, I can tell you about is that I participated in a podcaster's swap. So uh, it, this was a lovely swap that was hosted by, oh shoot, I'm going to forget her name. Oh, so many names, so many podcasts. Oh, her podcast is like, is it a sassy homemaker? Or 
it's something like that. It's it's something homemaker podcast, and it's like sassy or. Oh shoot, I forget. I'll put it in the show notes. But she hosted. She was lovely, and her podcast is lovely. And I can't remember it, or I tell you to go watch it. Uh, shoot, Sarah. Uh, anyway, and I got paired up with Andre Sue Nitz. So Andy uh, is is her name, and she hosts a podcast called Andre Sue Nitz, which if you are a podcast watcher, you probably know who she is and she needs very little explanation, but she is like a craft artisan maven when it comes to anything she touches, uh, just turns into gold. It's like she has a Midas touch when it comes to all craft projects. She recently started dyeing up sock blanks, which are, uh, like knit, blocks of yarn that you can then stencil on and then knit from that block. And uh, she makes some of the most beautiful sock blanks that I've ever seen. Just amazing layering of colors and designs. And I believe she's going to have a shop update soon. So keep your eyes on the lookout for that. Um, so I was I was thrilled when I got paired up with her because as a new podcaster myself and someone who's just committed themselves to this year of yarn and knitting and everything, Andre Sunitz was kind of a big name to me. You know, it's like, she's one of those, she's the Susan B. Anderson of podcasting or something. And I was like, oh my God, I got paired up with Andy. There's, it, it, that's so intimidating <laughs> because you're so, it was a Christmas in July swap, and you were supposed to swap something that uh, you make, so a handmade item, as well as other little trinkets if you so desire. And I thought, there's nothing I can make that's going to be up to her level. She's just, she is that good. She wants to do embroidery. Not only does she do embroidery, but like she makes up her own patterns and just flies off the cuff, whereas I would like bite all my fingernails off and research and get all the books from the library about embroidery before I did anything. And uh, so I was very excited that she was my swap partner. And she sent her swap package off to me way before I got mine in the mail to her. And when her package showed up, my jaw dropped because the handmade object that she included to give me was one of her felted gnomes. Isn't he cute? OMG! Andy, look at this. Look at him. He needs a seriously good name. Like, I could make him a co-host. I could just, I'll sit him like right here on my shoulder and I'll call him something mythical and adorable like Pierpon or something, which means magical little creature, I think. Um, so <laughs> it, intended to be a Christmas ornament and I love Christmas. Like I'm Christmas's number one fan. I have a feeling that this adorable little felted gnome is going to be out year round. He's a 365 day a year ornament. And um, so a while ago, I believe Andy, having watched her podcast, I know that she was in a felting uh, phase where she was doing a lot of felted items. And so I'm just really flattered that I got one of her felted gnomes and, oh, he's so cute. You're so cute. Um, so this was the handmade object that she included in the package. And then we were also supposed to swap some mini skeins. And so, sorry for the crinkling. I'll try to keep it to a minimum. These are her mini skeins. And uh, she hand dyed them herself, herself and included them. And I don't know what the colorways are. She didn't include any colorways. Um, I think she said they were all 100% super wash. Uh, merino and 25 or 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And so these are going to be made up into some crocheted hexagons for my mini blanket. Um, and then she just included some other little cute things that I'll just show you real quick. Like, uh, I don't, I don't know how to say this moons and little sticky memo notepad, which I have been waiting to show on the podcast so that I could start uh, using him at work because I think he would make me really happy to leave little notes on my coworkers' desks using 
this little guy. And then she also included this beautiful owl stitch marker. Ooh, ooh. No, you don't want to focus. He's just too cool for school. He can't focus. He's too blinged out. Um, and then also, I believe this is a row counter that you like put on your uh, thumb or something. I don't know why the, the strap is so tiny, but I imagine the idea is that you like put it on your thumb or something and then you can do a, a row counter while you're knitting. Although maybe I would just strap it on a necklace and just click a, click at it that way. Um, okay, so I think that's it. If she included any candies or teas or whatever, I've already, they would, they would be gone at this point. It's been weeks. So, um, and then, and then she gave me this beautiful note card with a nice little sentiment inside. And so that was my swap package from, um, Andy of Andre Sue Knits. And if you don't watch her podcast, please, uh, check it out. She has, she's such an artist, like a true craft artisan. And then, oh my gosh, I have like four things cause it's been like four weeks. Um, so let's see. Then I had ordered freckled whimsy yarn, which I showed in my last podcast, but I had also ordered one of freckled whimsy's project bags. She makes tall project bags so you can fold them all the way down and I had gotten this strawberry shortcake one. I'd ordered it at the same time that I ordered the yarn, but it came um, about three weeks later, I think, because uh, it was a pre-order. And so the idea behind her bags is that they're extra tall so that you can roll them down and still have a lot of bag left. So, that's kind of, this is rolled crooked, but you kind of get the idea here. And it comes with this really great uh, keychain kind of strap so that you can use it as a wrist strap or you could take it off and put it on a, um, on a keychain. So I had to get this one because when I was a little girl, um, my parents are divorced and I would go in between their houses, um, you know, like split custody style weekends and weekdays. And at each house I had a strawberry shortcake sleeping bag. And I feel like that kind of just is a huge part of my childhood. I just always had that sleeping bag with me, no matter whose parents' house I was at or anything like that. Your toys might've been different, but my sleeping bag was always the same. And so I think there was something about that strawberry shortcake sleeping bag that just provided a lot of childhood comfort. And I think I must have had some sort of strawberry shortcake bedroom theme at my mom's house because I also had a strawberry shortcake cake, uh, like coat hanger. It was like a strawberry, a piece of corrugated board that was a strawberry with strawberry shortcake's face on it and like four little pegs that you could hang up coats or sweaters on. And I'll never forget that in writing around the strawberry, it said, being neat is very sweet. And to this day, I love puns. And so I kind of wish I still had that now. But anyway, um, I saw that she was, she had these up for order. And I was like, I have to get one of these. And so this is her business card. If, you, if I'm not being clear enough on what her name is, it's Freckled Whimsy. And this is her shop information. Whoop. Oh, there you go. Okay. So that came in the mail. And then um, now on to the yarn uh, acquisitions. So these all came in the mail, but they're also mostly acquisitions. So not like a swap or in a you've got mail kind of way, but it's yarn that I purchased. So I believe about two episodes back, I talked about going to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival and how I was disappointed because there were so many vendors there that I knew that were there or I found out later that they were there, but I didn't get to see them while I was there. And so one of those was Gail's Art and she uh, is well known for her sock blanks and I thought, 
oh shoot, I really wanted to see her booth and I really wanted to get one of her sock blanks. How unfortunate. Well, about two weeks ago, I'm at home going through Instagram. This is me doo, 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 on Instagram and Gail's art pops up. I didn't even remember that I subscribed to her and she was having a sock blank pre-order and I got one and I was so excited because I really wanted one. Um, and this one was so perfect for summer. And so I got her watermelon sock blank. Ah, how cool is this? Look at that. And, and I have been waiting for two to three weeks now to work on this because I wanted to show it on the podcast because it's so beautiful and it looks just like watermelon. I mean, even down to those watermelon stripes, right? I don't know how people dye on sock blanks. It must be a true art. I imagine there's some sort of color layering thing where you have to start with lights and go to darks. Um, but this is just, it's gorgeous and I can't wait to knit up some fun summer socks on it. So this is on her uh, single knit sock blank. It's 463 yards, 100 grams. 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and this one's called watermelon. And so this is her little business card that comes with it. Nope, focus. There you go. Okay. Oh, come on. I don't know if she has any more of these left, but the idea with the sock blank is that you start... I believe she she tells you to start at this end and you basically just pull it and you unravel it just like unraveling a sweater or frogging a project and you knit as you frog the sock blank and so the yarn is kind of crinkly as you're knitting with it but um, basically these colors will appear in the sock but they won't look like a watermelon when I'm done with it by any means they'll just have the same colors that are currently in here and it's kind of very like dada art like just whatever appears or however it shows up is how it's intended to be like there is there is nothing once it's unraveled that's intentional just it's kind of speckled and variegated and I love it and I love looking at it and now I can't wait to take it apart now that I've shown it on the podcast <laughs> so the last two things I acquired this week were due to subscriptions so I I subscribed to a Homespun House's Harry Potter uh, yarn club for the second series. And so I got my second skein of yarn out of that yarn club. And uh, if you are a member of the Harry Potter sock club with Molly of a Homespun House, and you haven't gotten your second uh, skein of yarn, yen, then yarn yet, then look away. This will totally um, blow the surprise. So spoiler alert. That's what I was trying to think of. Spoiler alert. And if you haven't and you want to see what it is, it's so pretty. Here it is. Ooh. Ah. Can you see that progress keeper? There it is. That, my friends, is a dragon. And this is called the first the first task. So that is the colorway. And in case you can't guess, by looking at the progress keeper, that has to do with the first challenge in the Triwizard Tournament in Harry Potter, which I believe is the fourth book of Harry Potter. And so this colorway is on her sparkle fingering, which is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. And this looks like a gold stellina. It's 437 yards or 100 grams. And so I think you can see, yeah, you can, the gold stellina that's in there and just kind of sparkles. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, so yay, Harry Potter. Okay, back there with all my yarn that I've not been able to knit with. And then lastly, my very last acquisition was my last installment of the Harry Potter uh, Minis uh, Yarn Club by Mint Rain. And so these are the, 
these are the colors. Actually, hold on. Let me see if I can scoot this down further so that you can really see the colors. There we go. So from, let's see. I guess you can kind of see the writing, but I will tell you what it says. So Crookshanks would be this orange. This white and yellow and black one is Hedwig. This pink one is Arnold, which I think is a pygmy puff owned by Ginny Weasley. This brown one is Scabbers. And this last one is Errol, which is the Weasley's family owl. And every time you order from Mint Rain a mini skein set, or at least every time that I've gotten one, recently she's included a progress keeper. And so with this month's, she included this little, oops, this little, um, oh, it won't focus, this spinning wheel. Focus. Focus, focus. Anyway, you can kind of get the idea. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. That's better. Um, so, yeah, she included this really pretty spinning wheel, and I thought that was just adorable. That was my last installment, and I don't think I'm going to go in for another set of Harry Potters just because at this point I have so many mini skeins, and I've just started my sock blanket. So um, I'm going to wait. So let's see. Um, my next section is Knit Happenings which are events that I'm attending. Um, and I had talked about attending the Estes Fiber Festival, but I did not end up going to that, so I don't have any stories to tell. <laughs> um, it's hosted annually, so I hope to go next year. The two events that I have coming up that I will be attending, I believe, uh, one is Stephen B., is coming to a yarn store called Cowgirl Yarn, and that is located in Laramie, Wyoming, which is about 30 to 40 minutes north of me, uh, like straight north in, I think, uh, like an old town, Wyoming, like an old street. Um, they are going to be hosting Stephen B., I believe, for a couple of days at the end of July, and I have a couple of local knitting friends, and we've talked about driving up there to meet him, see him, see what we can see, and do what we can do with Stephen B. So hopefully that will happen at the end of this month. And then the last thing that I will be attending is the second annual, well, it's not annual, semi-annual, I don't know, uh, the second event ever of Knit Nosh, which was my very first event held uh, this year by Becky Kelly of the um, Knit Actually podcast. I believe it's Knit Actually. Yeah. And uh, she will be hosting this event again in a different location, but with the same concept of you're going to be knitting and noshing, meaning you are going to be given samples of yarn as well as samples of wine and beer and samples of food uh, with the idea that with half an hour courses. So your first course, you get one skein of yarn, you get one drink, and you get one dish, and you try those for half an hour, and then you rotate on till you've tried. I think there's four um, little sessions of each. And so that event is happening September 17th. If you are interested in attending Knit Nosh, it will be held in, I believe, Arvada, Colorado. And uh, I think you just have to go to the Knit Actually website or look at Knit Actually on Ravelry. And I believe she has a Knit Actually Facebook page as well and see if tickets are still available. Um, so that's, that's happening in September. So my last two things are, um, or my second to last thing is pod love. And so uh, one recent podcast that I've started watching that I've been enjoying is um, Yarn Junkie. And oh my gosh, I didn't write her name down. Hmm. Sarah. Um, so uh, Yarn Junkie is hosted by a woman whose name I don't know. And I've watched two of her episodes so far. I think she's been around for quite a while. I, I feel like she has over 100 episodes. And she's based out of Texas, 
and um, she's into all kinds of crafts. And I think she has two daughters, two younger daughters who are artistic. And um, she has a really sweet Southern accent that's just really nice to listen to. And she's kind of funny. And um, I just enjoyed her personality a lot. So I would recommend Yarn Junkie. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is my Etsy shop. So if you have come here to see the knitting and the podcasting stuff, then uh, thank you for coming. And please subscribe if you would like to see more of this YouTube video. Um, like the video if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, please let me know why. But now I'm going to be moving on to talking about my Etsy shop where I make project bags and knitting uh, notions pouches and soon to come knit accessories that I'll talk about later. <laughs> I'm not going to really talk about it now. So um, thank you for joining me. And now I'm going to talk about my Etsy shop. So um, I have a couple bags up in the shop now and I'm, I finished up a couple more last week and I'm going to be posting them this weekend. Uh, a little late to the, to the party, but I did wanna do a 4th of July discount code. And so um, starting today and going through Tuesday, uh, any order that you place will be 15% off. So uh, if you are interested, please head over there and use the coupon code HAPPY4, uh, that's H-A-P-P-Y, the number four, TH, happy fourth. And uh, that's if you're not in the United States, that's because uh, Monday is our independence day when we as a nation declared our independence from Britain. And um, so, uh, yeah, so happy fourth will be the discount code. And I'll put that up here at the bottom of the screen. And I'll show you some of the new bags that I'm gonna have up in the shop, but the discount applies to anything. You can just use it at checkout. And so um, these are the same fabrics that I've used before, but I've just kind of changed out the, uh, the style in which they are sewn together. So this is a medium sized project bag with just more like a little uh, finger handhold and um, it has just a muslin um, inside to it. And so opposite of this one, you can see here that I've swapped out the fabrics. So one has the flowers on top and one has the flowers on the bottom. And this one as well has a muslin lining. So these two will be up in the shop as well as this one, which is similar to another bag that I have in the shop, but that bag is all this yellow fabric on the outside and this coral color on the inside. And so this has a full wrist strap to it. And then the inside is white cotton. So this will be up there as well. I also have about seven other bags that I'm going to be posting up in the shop between today and tomorrow. So uh, if you are interested in purchasing any of those or just looking at them, they are on Etsy under the knitting type um, as, as the shop title. And that's all I have. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week. And again, if you wanna be entered into the subscriber drawing, please subscribe to this channel and leave a comment um, in the comment section under this video. And I will be closing that on Friday July 8th, and I will be announcing a winner in my next podcast, which, um, well, I'll probably announce the winner on Ravelry under my show notes, uh, but not until, well, probably July 9th. I haven't really thought this out. July 9th, and then um, I'll announce it on Instagram and uh, probably leave a comment on this video as well and then announce it in my last, my next video, which will be two weeks from now. So that's all I've got. And thank you so much for joining me and I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Hello. 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 My chair's not comfortable. My poor camera.
Okay.